He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Blessings to you. May you please know that God is with us wherever and however we are. If you will join with me as we share in our opening song, Easter People, Raise Your Voices. indeed Christ is risen Christ is risen indeed let us join in our call to worship darkness gives way to light Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen anger gives way to love Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen despair gives way to hope Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen death gives way to life Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. And we continue as we hear now a passage of scripture from Isaiah, the 65th chapter, verses 17 through 25. And I again will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. 
but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies in a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are not yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the serpent its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, says the Lord. A day of promise is coming when we will find peace that inhabits. And God's promise is that no matter where we are, he is there establishing a haven of peace for us. May that haven of peace surround us in worship today, wherever we might be. The word of God. Again, for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. If you are able, then, will you join with me in our Easter affirmation as we pray together in unison. In the, in the sanctuary, sanctuary of our, of our homes, homes, we, we praise, praise you, living, living God, God, with, with songs, songs and, and prayer and, and listening hearts and lives, lives trusting to, to obey your, your will. will. You have we created and are creating, creating bringing life and hope and love. You come in Jesus, your word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. In a culture where the power of death gets all the headlines, your Holy Spirit summons us to be people shaped by your power to work resurrection. We are not sure we believe as fully as we think we should. We are not sure we trust as deeply as we think you require. But we bring who we are and what we have become into your presence, longing to know your grace and your love. Forgive what has gone wrong, repair in us what is broken, reveal in us what is good, and turn us toward it. So may we follow wherever your spirit may lead. So may we love with the love of Jesus flowing through us. So may we, in body, mind, and spirit, be children, children of resurrection, resurrection children, children of hope, children, children of grace. In, in Christ, Christ Jesus' name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. And if you will join with righteous and praising song and voice as we sing together, Up from the Grave He Arose. Oh, 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 oh. 
It's okay because you count them and give us blessings in return. When we have moments when we want to shake our fists and say, why, Lord, why? You shout out loud and clear through the forgiven, resurrected spirit, you are forgiven. You tell us that you love us in spite of everything that we put before you. You love us. And so may love be the power, the energy, and the life that leads us beyond this place. And may our homes, our tables, our residence, be filled with your living spirit today, just as you desire for it to be every day. And so may we begin by uttering those words that you gift us as we pray together. Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we give God thanks, because there are these many gifts that continue to come and shed light upon this place. We know that the ministry of your hearts continue as we continue in ministry however and wherever we can. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for these gifts, and we offer them back to you in this day. Lord Jesus Christ, may you take these gifts, offer blessings upon them, and encourage and bless us in the living whole. That as these gifts go out into our community and our community abroad, they continue to be a blessing unto each and every one of us. For the true gift is in giving and serving the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able, let's join our voices together as we sing from the bottom of our praiseworthy hearts, Thine be the glory.
me. Will you come forward and help me be a part of the children's community for us today? So, for all of my friends out there, I offer my Easter greetings to you. Toby and I certainly miss having you here. But know that right where you are is exactly where you need to be. And God is blessing you, I know, in the midst of this. Don't forget, Pastor John's promise to you is that for every Sunday you're not here, there's a piece of candy going into your bag. And know that it is good because you are good. We love you. But I want to share with you a little message here this morning. Toby, I got a couple eggs here in my hand. And we have some chickens at home, don't we? Yeah. Now, what happens when we get the eggs from the coop? What, what, what happens? Did, have you always gotten eggs that are filled with good stuff? Have you ever picked up a, a different kind of an egg? Yeah. What kind of a different egg did you pick up one time? One time I picked up a fake egg. You picked up a fake egg? <laughs> yeah. There was a little bit of a surprise in the chicken coop because there's a couple of fake eggs in there just to remind my girls that they've got a job to do. And Toby... In his good-hearted nature, he picked up that fake egg, but the joke was on Dad, wasn't it? Because that egg was in the carton, and Dad pulled that egg out of the carton, and he started smacking it on the pot to break it open. And that egg, it just would not break open, would it? No. And I was bang, bang, banging away, and I said, boy, this egg is really, really good and hard. It's really protected well. And I stood there banging that egg for quite a while until I finally realized it wasn't a real egg. Now, I got a couple eggs here, and neither one of them are real eggs, are they? Now, if I was going to ask you, which one of those eggs would you like to pick to be your egg that you're going to find today? You want that one, okay? Why? Why'd you pick that one? Does it look shiny? Yeah. yeah. You want to open it? See what's in there. Nothing. Nothing. Do you want to choose again? Yes. Yes? Let's open that egg. What did you find? What is that? What? What is that? Mm -hmm. You know what that is. What is that? Butterfly. It's a butterfly. That is a butterfly. Now, I've got a butterfly up here, don't I? Yeah. Now, why do you think I have a butterfly? Why do you think you found a butterfly? Do you know? Because it's Easter. Because it's Easter. And butterflies serve as a reminder for us of the resurrection. That Jesus went into a tomb... And he came out of that tomb a new creation. Just like a, a butterfly starts out as a caterpillar and it goes into that cocoon and spins itself all up. And when it finally breaks out, it has changed from something ugly to something beautiful. And Jesus does the same thing for us, doesn't he? He takes all of the bad stuff that we might do, all of those hard eggs that aren't real, that we want to just keep breaking, 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 and they don't break open the way they're supposed to. We sometimes are like that. We do bad things. We might say lies. We might get in fights. We might not listen. And yet God gives us a promise that there's a new beginning. That when we break open one of those eggs, we find something amazing. And that's what God does for us in this Easter. He breaks our hearts open and gives us a new beginning in Jesus Christ. Toby, I love you, and so does Jesus. Can you say that? I love you, and so does Jesus. That's a perfect reminder for all of my kids out there. Why don't you share that message today? Because that's the best Easter message you can share. I love you, and so does Jesus. How about we pray this morning? God, we thank you for this day, and for your love, and for Easter, 
and all the goodness that you give to us in Jesus' name. Keep us all safe. We love you, Lord, and all God's children say, Amen. Don't forget your basket there, bud. Our gospel reading for the day comes from the 20th chapter of John, the first 18 verses. May we hear now the words of Scripture that come from the New Revised Standard Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. The other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood, weeping just outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen! I have seen the Lord! And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding and the warming of all of our hearts as we come to full knowledge of what God has in store for us. From this, the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, there was some traveling that took place that first Easter morning. And we have to be mindful of the fact that the disciples had all tucked themselves away in the very same upper room where the 
Lord's Supper had taken place, where their feet had been washed, where all of the preparations had been made, where the scheme of betrayal began, where Jesus named the sins that were erupting. And in that place, those disciples were sheltered in place. They were socially distancing themselves from the authorities and the powers and the neighborhood because they didn't want to get turned in for doing something wrong. They had hidden themselves away. They were angry. They were frustrated. They were concerned. They were anxious. Their new normal was completely different than what their regular normal had been. But what is normal? That, I'm sure, was a question that was rattling around in their heads. Maybe that's been a point of conversation for all of us in the, in the midst of this. And those disciples, they were asking the question, where is he? Because they had been hearing. They had lived out the promise of ministry in the days with Jesus, and they had heard loud and clear that he would not die, that he would conquer. And yet, they saw the events that rapidly took place. As not only was Jesus captured, he was put on trial, and he was charged. As the people shouted out, Crucify! And when he went up to Golgotha and was nailed to a cross to die a criminal's death, and he breathed his last, their spirits were dashed. They were broken. And they were left asking the question, where is he? And just as quickly, the time and place of the Sabbath came. And everything went dark. <coughs> their spirits, their hearts, their lives. But it doesn't stop there. Because it says, early on the first day of the week, Mary got up and she went to the borrowed tomb from Joseph of Arimathea so that she could find her Lord. And when she arrived, the stone, it's gone. And that tomb, it's empty. And she's concerned. And she runs back, and Peter and the beloved disciple, they themselves sprint, racing to see what had happened. There was a level of concern. Where is he? What do you mean they've taken his body? What do you mean he's not there? We knew that he had been put there for safekeeping. Where is he? And as they bent and looked in. There were the linen wrappings folded neatly with bright raiment. And it says, For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned. To their homes. Where is he? You know, we're living this scripture. We're looking into the tomb and going, this doesn't feel quite right. Easter doesn't seem quite right. 
We're looking into that tomb and going, hold on a second. We didn't get to experience our Easter sunrise service like we normally do in Cook Forest. We, we didn't get to be crowded into the sanctuary and see all of the flowers and smell the smells and maybe put on our suit that one time we do a year. It didn't feel quite right this morning. We're peering into that tomb and going, where is he? Does this pandemic stop Easter from happening? When we peer into the tomb, are we looking at it saying, I, I, I just can't do this today. It doesn't feel quite right. And if that's where we're stuck, we have to hear loud and clear. The first disciples were right there with you. And it says, the disciples did not quite understand the scripture that he arose. The tomb, it's empty. The church building, it's empty. But your house, it's meant to be full. Your heart, it's meant to be full. That hasn't changed. So the question that gets asked is, where is he? And Mary, when the disciples had ran back, returning to their homes, they went back to their social distancing. They went right back to their sheltering in place, questioning, where is he? Mary stood there with that level of faithfulness, crying, weeping, in fact. And as she's standing there weeping, she sees those two angels sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, one at the feet. And they ask the question, woman, why are you weeping? And her response, they've taken my Lord away. Maybe we're stuck in that place where we might be weeping a little bit ourselves, saying, I just can't do this. This doesn't feel quite right. I find myself depressed or angry or fighting with the people that I'm sheltering in place with. And it doesn't feel like a shelter. It feels like an arena. And yet, as we're there weeping, the message is still the same. Why are you looking for the dead among the living? Why are you so wrapped up, so tied up, so knotted up thinking about the, this isn't quite right, when Jesus' purpose was that none of this was going to be quite right. It's a new normal. That the tomb would be bursted open and the, the ones dead would be alive. That you and your sadness, your anger, your frustration, your depression, your fear, Jesus wants to be right there with you. Why are you weeping? And when we say, they've taken my Sunday morning worship away. They've taken my sanctuary and good shepherd away. They've taken my Easter traditions away. And just when we say that, our experience is no different than it was, than it was for Mary, because she says in her own heart, where is he? And Jesus says, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Mary says, they've taken him away. Jesus.
comes back loud and clear. Mary. Mary. Immediately upon hearing her name, she recognizes. And she says, Rabbi, teacher, lover of my life, the one who has lived and walked and taught and been with me and for me. Rabboni. Immediately, Mary's eyes were opened, and no longer was she saying, where is he? Instead, she says, I've seen him! He is risen! He is risen indeed! And she was sent by Jesus to go and tell the brothers the disciples, and everyone that she could see what it was that Jesus had shown her. And she immediately left and reminded people, I've seen the Lord. In the midst of this pandemic, when we are looking towards that Easter experience when we want to see the cross invited and ray and white and the flowers surrounding it and the, the golds and the, the beauty. And we might be sitting in our sanctuary of our homes today, sitting on our recliners, or maybe some of us haven't put on our suits, we're still wearing our pajamas. And that's okay. Because when we ask the question, where is he? Jesus is where you are. He is right where you need him to be. And the promise is this. When we're asking that question out of our own brokenness, going, where is he? This doesn't feel right. Jesus calls out loud and clear, and he says, your name. He says your name personally. Easter is about you. Yeah, it's a collective process too. It is about the church, but guess what? We are the church. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. And Jesus whispers your name, shouts your name calls your name today. Wherever and however you are in the midst of asking that question, where is he? Jesus is there. And the promise is that you and I are an Easter people. So it doesn't matter whether we're worshiping in the sanctuary of Good Shepherd or we're worshiping in the sanctuary of our homes, in front of our TVs, a laptop, a phone, in your bed, on your recliner, sitting at the kitchen table. It doesn't matter where we are, because the first disciples, they were hidden away in the dark, socially distancing themselves because they were afraid. We have something in common, don't we? And yet, Jesus came, and he said loud and clear, I am here. When we ask the question, where is he? He's in your heart. He is in your heart. The tomb couldn't hold him. The sanctuary doesn't hold him here. He's with you. He has gone with you. And when we ask that question, where are you, Lord? May we hear him calling our name today. It's a personal message of love that says to every single one of us, I will take your tears. I will take your brokenness. I will take your sadness. I will take your sins. And I will nail it all to the cross. And I will come back a new creation so that you can be a new creation. Where is he? He's with you. Where is he? He is risen.
He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. You know what? I'm going to try really hard, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to see if I can't hear you shouting it from your homes. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I think I heard it. I think I heard it. Just like we hear him calling our names today. Jesus came for you and for me. He is alive. Though that tomb was empty, your heart is full. May you know that the promise of Easter does not stop just because we're not in this building. The trueness of worship is that Jesus goes with you wherever you might be. May we be like Mary and share that message with one another today. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. He calls you by name and says, Brother, sister, love of my life, you are forgiven. I died for you that you might have new life and have it abundantly. Where is he? He's with you. He's right here in the sanctuary of your heart and mine. May the distance that separates us be holy ground, just as it was for the first disciples God's promise is still true. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, on this resurrection day, you are here. You are here in our hearts. Awaken us to that. Whisper in our ears. Let us hear your voice. May we recognize that call to us that it's not only our name, John, it's also sinner. Come home. God is calling you. Sinner, come home. And I will live with you wherever and however you are. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you are able, may we join our voices together as we proclaim and praise loud and clear, He lives! Just the 
lives within your heart. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He lives within your heart. Where is he? He lives within your heart. As an Easter people, be an Easter people and share that love with others today. Online, on the phone, in your heart, wherever and however you are, he lives for you. Now may we go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, blessed to be a blessing now and always. Amen. He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Yes, we live.